I think the scariest thing I've ever done in my film life is um, doing Before Sunset, the second film. Mm -hmm. Going back into these characters, because we had a special time. 20 years ago this summer, we were in Vienna shooting. And, uh, you know, you don't want to... We felt compelled, like Jesse and Celine had sort of reemerged in our lives and were kind of saying something about being 32 instead of 23. And, but still, it was scary. To, to kind of revisit them and you thought you could maybe mess it up and it would mess up the first film in some strange way, something that was, you know, special to us. So I don't know. It took, but actually, Boyhood, we had started Boyhood the year before, start, mm -hmm. shot that in 02. So we shot Before Sunset in 03. So I think committing to doing this life project of Boyhood, when that is a commitment, we all 12 years where these were optional. Um, I think it emboldened Ethan and I in a way to, you know, well, we got this one life project. Why not, you know, <laughs> in for a penny, you know, let's have this other life project, you know. Yeah. But even then, we just did the one film and we didn't really know there was going to be a third. So. And, and at what point in the, there's nine years between yeah. both uh, the follow-on yeah, films. Yeah, it just happened that way. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's usually about five or six years in that we realize, oh, you know, might, might maybe, be time to maybe there's about. something to say yeah. about a new part of life, yeah. I think one, one of the things that is so wonderful about the films is that we're invited in and they're so extremely intimate. And yet mm -hmm. at the same time, uh, you know, everything that they go through seems incredibly familiar. Mm -hmm. um, how, how did you yeah. sort of strike that balance, if you like, creatively? Well, I think Jesse and Celine kind of, and the, the family in Boyhood, they're not like extraordinary people. There's something kind of, I mean, they have their charms, but they're, they're not out of the ordinary people, you know? They, so, you know, there, there's something normal about them in a way. So I think there should be a lot of familiarity. You know, we're, we're a lot more similar than we are different in our lives and what we're all doing, so. And I, it's a challenge to make that watchable and you know, make that cinematic you know, yeah. about a conversation or something but it takes a lot of work <laughs> to the script it, of those films are is very delicate and and really laborious you know it's to and to make it seem kind of improvised you know. mm. but it's really highly structured it's the second film too because we couldn't cut anything out you know most films you can shoot and if something doesn't work you can maybe trim it or lose it all together and restructure it in the editing room but that's a real time film I, I cut out one I cut out like one line out of the movie from mm -hmm. what we shot so I kind of like that it's like game day it has to work this mm -hmm. is it mm -hmm. you can't you can't fix it in the editing room you know so and, and what about the idea that each one should also kind of work on its own yeah yeah that was that's a consideration too you can't count on anyone to have seen the the other film or films it has to work on its own mm. you know, so you have to hint just enough to kind of fill them in but not be too obvious about it and the second one you know took that leap and had some clips but it kind of worked with the story that he was telling in the bookstore but the third one we didn't need any of that i think we just referred to it because we had more people in the movie the first half of the movie so it was easy to include a little bit of catch up I guess you know to the where their relationship began yeah. and how they kind of interpret it a little differently all these years later <laughs>